Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to explain Quicksort, how it works, and then at the end of the video, we'll go through the Python code together. The first step is to put the indexes onto our array. So here are the indexes. And the second step is to put the start and the end onto this array. So the start is S and the end is E. The third step is to calculate the mid index. And the formula is S plus E divided by 2. So S is currently at index 0, E is at 4, so we get 4 divided by 2, which gives us 2. So mid is at index 2. And the fourth step is to select our pivot, and that's very easy to do. So wherever our mid index is, we look at the number in the array, and this will be our pivot. The fifth step is to do something called partition, and I like to think of it as a game with two players. So we replace S with L and E with R. And the goal of this game is to get all the numbers less than the pivot on the left bubble. So for example, here we have 2 and 1, and all the numbers larger than the pivot to the right bubble, so 5 and 4. Here, the order does not matter as long as you get the numbers in their correct places. So the player L will find us a number that is larger than the pivot or equal to the pivot. So let's see. No? Yes, because 5 is larger than the pivot. Now, R will find us a number that is either smaller than the pivot or equal to the pivot. So note, 4 is not smaller or equal to the pivot. So let's take a look at 1. And yes, it is. 1 is smaller than 3. And what to do next? Well, we simply swap 5 and 1. So now you see that 1 is in the left bubble and 5 is in the right bubble. And then we move L to the right and R to the left and repeat this process. Remember, L will try to find us a number that is larger than the pivot or equal to the pivot. And L already found 3, right? It's equal to the pivot. Now, R will find us a number that is smaller than the pivot or equal to the pivot. So R also finds 3. And we swap 3 with itself. So just swap in place. And then we move L to the right and R to the left. At this point, L and R have crossed each other, and this indicates that the partition game is finished. So notice that all the numbers smaller than 3 are to the left side, and all the numbers greater than 3 are to the right side. Before we move on to the next step, let's first summarize the partition game. So while L is less than or equal to R, basically this just means repeat these following steps until L and R cross each other, and that's when the game finishes. While the number in the array at L is smaller than the pivot, we move L to the right. So after this while loop, L will find us a number that is either larger than the pivot or equal to the pivot. Now the next while loop, so while the number in the array at R is greater than the pivot, we move R to the left. So what is the result after this while loop? Well, R will find us a number that is either smaller than the pivot or equal to the pivot. And we're almost done. So we check if L and R have not crossed each other yet. Then we swap the numbers in the array at index L and R. We move L to the right and R to the left. And the last step is to return L. And I'll show you what's going to happen. So basically, L was here before. We just replace L with a different variable called index. And why do we do this? Well, remember, we want to partition the array, right? So from the index to the end of the array will be in its own box, like this. And the other side will also be in its own box. Now, quicksort is recursive in nature. So basically, we repeat quicksort on the left side first and then on the right side. So always on the left side, we put S, which is the start, and then E at the end. We calculate the mid, so S is 0, E is 2, so we get 2 divided by 2, which gives us 1. And then at mid, we have the pivot. Once we have the pivot, we're going to play the partition game. So L will find us a number that is either larger than the pivot or equal to the pivot. Yep, we found it. 2 is larger than 1, which is the pivot. Now R 
will find us a number that is either smaller than the pivot or equal to the pivot. So nope, at three, it's not. At one, yep, we found it because one is equal to the pivot. And then we swap the numbers in the array at L and R. So it's just like that. Finally, we move L to the right and R to the left. Notice that L and R have crossed each other, which means that the partition game is now finished. We replaced L with another variable called index, and basically from the index to the end of this box will be in its own separate box, just like that. We look at the leftmost box and place the start and the end onto this box. Now, when the start and the end are on the same number, this indicates that this number is in its correct place. So one is in its correct place, which makes sense, right? Because one is the smallest number in this array. Now we placed the start and the end on the next box. We calculate the mid. So S is one, E is two. So one plus two gives you three, three divided by two gives you 1.5. And these signs means you round down. So 1.5 rounded down gives you one. Mid is at index one and two will be our pivot. Now we play the partition game. So L will find us a number that is either larger than the pivot or equal to the pivot. We found two and two is equal to the pivot. R will find us a number that is smaller or equal to the pivot. So three is not, two is yes, because two is equal to the pivot. Then we swap the number in the array at index L and R. So basically just swap two with itself. And then we move L to the right and R to the left. At this point, L and R have crossed each other, which means that the partition game is finished. We replace L with the variable index, and from index to the end of this box, like this, will be in its own separate space. We put S and E on this box, and since S and E are on the same number, this indicates that 2 is also in its correct place. Now we look at this box, and it's also in its correct place. Now our last box. So we calculate the mid. So we have 3 plus 4, which is 7, divided by 2, which gives us 3.5, rounded down, which gives us 3. So mid is at index 3, and 5 will be our pivot. We begin the partition. So L is at 5, right? And L will find us a number that is larger or equal to the pivot. And 5 is equal to the pivot. Now R will find us a number smaller or equal to the pivot. So 4 is smaller than the pivot. Now we swap 5 and 4. We move L to the right and R to the left. We replace L with the index. And from the index to the end of this box, we will split like this. And now we put S and E onto this box. We know that 4 is in its correct place. How about this one? 5 is also in its correct place. So now the array is sorted. Let's take a look at the Python code. So the quicksort algorithm function will have the array and it will call quicksort. And the reason why it's doing this is so that it can put the S at index zero and the E at the end of the array. And then we have two boxes. The first box will be from the index to the end and the rest will be in its own box. So from the start to index minus one. And so quicksort is recursive. Now let's look at partition. So we replace S with L and E with R. And here is the rest of the code. We've already gone through it. And at the end, it will return index L. So you can use this code to test it. We have the array. This is before the sort. Then we use quicksort algorithm on the array. And then we print out the array after the sort. So in the best case, quicksort is n log n. Average case is also n log n. And the worst case is O n square. And the space complexity is O log n. So that's it for today. If you found this video helpful and enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe and also share with your classmates. And I'll see you in the next video.